Hi, my name is Dr. Philip Ritzlowski from the Advanced Foot and Ankle Center of San Diego, and welcome to The Fix. Today, we are excited to have joining with us Dr. Edgardo Rodriguez from Chicago, Illinois. Welcome, Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you for having me. You have a great case to share with us today. Tell us a little bit about this case. Well, the, the patient that I want to share with you is a patient who sustained a, a bullet, a gunshot injury to the, uh, to the extremity. And as a result, a patient developed uh, the bullet just deformed or created a deformity, a crooked bone segment on the leg. So you get called to the emergency room, you're in Chicago, and the patient has a bullet in the lower leg. The family's concerned, people are wondering what you do next. So what do you tell the family? What, what's the next steps when you see these patients? So obviously we have to stabilize extremity, figure out if the case has to be done immediately or it could, or it could wait. We look at the entry wound and the exit wound of the bullet. And if we see that they, they could be treated on a local fashion that doesn't require any uh, aggressive or a more detailed plastic reconstruction. The, uh, we try to optimize these patients the best we can. In other words, eliminate all anything that could increase the blood sugar, soda, bread, pasta, and sh cookies and all that, obviously. Because they're diabetics, and when your biology with diabetes is not going to help heal the bone and the skin because of the increased sugar level, as we know. So, do you, you're you're not every one of these cases needs surgery because not every not every bullet wound requires to be taken out. He needed because the the leg was crooked after the. That's a problem. If he was not being a, the bullet would have not created an abnormality on the on the on the leg on the TV on the bone. Perhaps just local wound care stabilization would have been enough. Uh, so you have a deformed bone now exactly. with bullets inside. You got swelling, and now you got to fix this. Before we proceed to a more invasive, we try to manipulate and see if by manipulation we can obtain what we want, but we cannot do it. Then we basically decide that at this point we had to be uh, a little bit more aggressive. So. Once the patient is stabilized, we bring the patient to the uh, operating room and we use what is called traction. In that same, at the same time, we already have a pre-assembled circular fixator true lock in the leg that then once the, the, divide, the leg is to the desired alignment, then the true lock fixator, it gets mobilized to the extremity distally or to, towards the foot and then it gets secured with the wires or transosseous wires. Uh, the, the big advantage of doing it this way is it's basically minimally incision where you're not cutting open the bones and putting it back with making big cuts. You're just, everything is done without making any cuts in the yeah, leg. Yeah, and there's a true advantage there. You're not disrupting what is called the blood flow to the bone. It's called the periosteum. Uh, you don't disrupt any further the muscle that provides the muscular perforators or the muscular flow to the periosteum. There's a lot of advantages doing this minimally invasive, but yeah, but it requires a different technique. It requires a different a surgeon skills to do it, but it is significantly superior because the patient, you're not disrupting and then the patient can do some progressive loading of the extremity. And we know that if we stress the bone, the fractures heal better. Ah, so the, the key message here is protect the soft tissue. At all times. That's the most key, that's the most important with these patients. And I remember also like seeing patients, you know, doctors come in, they try to fish out all the little bullet holes and then they end up with these big wounds and you didn't accomplish anything. Exactly, so, in this particular case, we noticed that there was no need. Uh, there was no vascular damage or arterial or, you know, circulation damage. Ah, so you do the surgery, you correct it with your technique of using traction, then applying the true lock X fixator, X external fixator. And does the patient go home right away? Yeah, so we keep them, we keep the patient 24 to 36 hours in the hospital to manage swelling, uh, maintaining and further controlling their blood sugars. Uh, but yes, the patient, once they're stable, their vitals are stable, they can start progressively loading the extremity immediately and they can be out of the hospital. Yeah, it's one of the big misconceptions with these types of cases because the patient can walk on these and put a little bit of weight on them as opposed to if you're opening it up and putting in plates and screws, then the patient can't walk on it. Another advantage that I notice is, is that in these cases, patients can shower and get these things wet. Without a doubt, the uh it, there's so many advantages of external circular fixation. It is one of the, the primary one is that 
for the skilled surgeon is better for the patient. The problem is that it's a skill that, you know what, surgeons are not, not trying to develop anymore. Um, it, it, sometimes it's easier for the surgeon to open things up and then apply what is called internal fixation, internal screws and plate, instead of going this way, because then they can close the skin and perhaps don't have to deal with that fixator later on. But for the patient benefit, the best is a circular fixator. Yeah, this is not to say that there isn't a role for internal fixation, but the reality is with our experience, we can say that external fixating these type of patients is far superior and safer for the patient. Yeah, and it's very well published that if you have severe soft tissue damage, severe soft tissue damage, these high energy fractures, they do better with devices that, are, that don't compromise the soft tissue or the skin, such as circular fixator or intramedular nailing. The problem is that sometimes the nailing or these rods that we use in the leg, because the fracture pattern cannot be secured adequately. But the circular fixator, there's no limitations. You can secure that leg at all levels without any problem. Ah, so patient goes home, you take a bunch of x-rays in the office, make sure that the bone is healed, then you remove the device. How's the patient doing now? So yes, once the fixator gets removed, we just basically start another segment, another period of rehabilitation. So then controlling edema, restoring range of motion of the ankle and knee. Uh, everything to bring this patient to what it was possibly before and restoring the quality of life. And the patient is doing very well. This is truly a case of not just limb salvage and limb preservation, but you, change, you, you save the guy's life that he can walk and function in society. Yes, yeah, so we've been, we've been very blessed in our institution with the cases that we have done. Our outcomes are very, very good. And we, we are still you know, providing that care. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us this case today. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Fix. Thank you.